The caller is asking a question. It's a very interesting question. In Sefer Yirmiyahu, the book of Jeremiah, we encounter a moving portrait of the Messianic age, powerful portraits of the Mashiach himself, which is unusual because most Messianic passages throughout the Jewish scriptures are about the Messianic age, not about the Messiah himself. Biyamov, in his days, Judah will be saved, Tivosha will be rescued, and Yisrael, Yishkon Levetach, and Israel will dwell so securely. We see here the return of the northern tribes. We have here Judah and Israel, and this is the name which he will be called. And you want to hear the name? Hashem Tzidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. And the words there are literally the Lord, meaning God, yud K vav K, the ineffable name of God. That's the name that the Messiah will be known by. I think that many people who have not gone through Jeremiah might find this very striking. As it turns out, Jeremiah is using a method that is found all over the Jewish scriptures. People or things that represent God, whether it's an altar, whether it's a prophet whose voice is used as a, an oracle for God, are called God. This is called a theophoric method, theophory. We don't talk this way conventionally. That means there is nothing in the English language or any language I'm aware of today where people talk this way, meaning if something is called God, that's God, that means that's God. No one would ever say that somebody or something is called God, like we find in Genesis that Jacob calls an altar God, like in Exodus chapter 21, 22, where we are introduced to judges. These are judges of Klal Yisrael who are judging according to the word of Hashem. They're literally called God. No one talks this way today. And therefore, because there is an enormous gap between how what is conventional today and what is conventional Tanakh, people can be very fooled by this, by this approach. Someone who is very who studies Jeremiah will would know immediately what's going on here. In fact, if we go just 10 chapters later, we find another passage, and you had both side by side, you'd see it's almost identical. Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell safely, and this is the name by which she will be called Hashem Sekenu. Jerusalem will be called the Lord our righteousness. Does that mean that the city of Jerusalem is God? That when Mashiach comes, people are going to bow down to Jerusalem and you say, you created me? Are we saying that we're going to worship Yerushalayim as God? So here we encounter usage of this theophoric method. Because Yerushalayim is going to reflect the glory of Hashem, therefore it's called God. When Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, when he said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that perhaps I'm not able to carry out this mandate to go to Pharaoh, and he says, I can't even talk. It means he, Moshe Rabbeinu had a speech impediment, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu turned to him in Exodus 7 verse 1 and said to him, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go to Pharaoh, and you are going to be an Elohim to Pharaoh? literally means a god to Pharaoh, and Aharon, your brother, he's going to be your prophet. Does that mean that Chalila, that Moshe is God, divine in any way? Heaven forbid. But it means that when Moshe Rabbeinu speaks, literally he opens his mouth, his voice box becomes a keli, becomes a vessel through which the word of Hashem emanates from, and then he's called God. He's not God in any way. If a person is not learned, meaning is not conversant in the Jewish scriptures, and certainly if you're not reading in the original Hebrew, wow, you can get yourself into huge trouble. And you're reading translations. If you're not reading all of Jeremiah, you don't have a chance. If you're not going through the book of Jeremiah, I mean, people read the Hardy Boys from cover to cover in 36 hours, kids do, but never read the book of Jeremiah once in their life, not once, and they believe it's the Word of God. It's mind-blowing. People read novels cover to cover, going through Harry Potter, a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of fiction, and people don't read Yeshaya. So the point is that this is simple convention in Tanakh. When something represents God, it's called God in Tanakh. It could be an angel, it could be judges, we have famously an angel. 
We have in Psalm chapter 8, in Psalm chapter 82, verse 6, we have it all over Tanakh. And these cases, in that case in Psalm 82, judges are called God, just like we see in Exodus chapter 20. Well, who calls a judge God? Well, these are judges who are judging according to the word of Hashem. And their teachings are literally, uh, their bodies, their voice, their whole essence becomes a, a, a vehicle for God's word. So they, they are called God. We don't talk that way. And because this is unconventional today, so therefore a person could be easily fooled by this. Let us hope that people go back to reading Tanakh, reading all of Jeremiah, and then people will not fall into these traps, these stumbling blocks, which are available everywhere if you're not familiar with the language of prophets of blessed memory.